Hey, thanks for visiting Duckman Cycles VW Garage. I am your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1956 Volkswagen Beetle Oval. And this sucker, I've been working on doing some welding. And last night, you remember, my day got kind of cut short because I had too much going on. But this car is a complete rebuild. I built the car out of junk. I found a salvaged car. Well, it should have been a salvaged car. It was actually sitting in somebody's yard for about 10 years after Hurricane Ivan submerged it under seawater for about two days. And, well, needless to say, the salt water sitting on it for 10 years just rusted the thing out to hell. And uh, I brought it back from hell. <laughs> and that's why she looks so angry today. Anyway, she's got a nasty roof chop that I put on there. Really, really nasty with slanted door posts. And what I'm trying to work on right now is getting these doors better fitted and getting some of the parts filled in, like the corners here, which is where I stopped on it yesterday. So I'm doing the best that I can to get as much done as possible. But unfortunately, it just seems like I've just been really, really busy. But, but, all of a sudden this afternoon, things have started to slow down. Because we've got Hurricane Michael out in the Gulf right now. And what that means to me is that a lot of the businesses here are getting quiet. And I don't know why, but every time there's a hurricane, they stop calling for technical service. And they just get real quiet for a couple days. And then the day of the hurricane, they try to dispatch me to a restaurant that's on the other side of where the hurricane is striking. And they want me to drive through the hurricane to get to it. Well, guess what? Yeah, that's about what you get. <laughs> Eleanor, I wasn't... I wasn't trying to finger you. Well, yeah, maybe I'll finger you someday, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> Anyways, if you enjoy my videos, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button. Now we get updates every time I upload a new video. And we're going to try to jump on this and get some done. I've probably got about, uh, about two and a half hours, three hours of daylight left. So I'm going to do the best that I can to uh, get as much done as possible and do as little talking as possible. So let me remind you one more thing. Duckman Cycles VW Garage on the Facebook group page. Make sure you join that group page. It'll be a discussion on this project and anything else that anybody else is sharing and I encourage you to share your project as well. Thanks you very much for watching and let's roll that intro. Boom. Well, we're back. And we're looking at the corner, the upper corner of the driver's side door. And this is where I put that triangular piece in here to fill in that corner to get that thing straightened out. You remember I was working on that contour and trying to get that radius right. It looks like I need to bend it out a little bit. That it shrunk a little bit after welling it, which is rather typical. It's not too big of a deal to bend that out just a little bit. I'd rather have it just a little longer because I can get in here with a ball peen hammer and just ping it a little bit in the middle and knock that curve back into it. Uh, once I get that done, I'm gonna run around a couple of the places on this door. I'm gonna make a little patch for this little hole right here. I gotta re-weld a lot of this because this is just for crap. I gotta grind down some of the stuff that I filled in yesterday. I've also gotta fix this triangle piece over here. So what I'm going to jump on first is what I was working on last, yesterday, and that's filling this sucker in. And looking at the top here, it looks like I cut it just a little bit long, but once again, that's okay. I'll just nick a little piece off, about a quarter of an inch, and then fold it back into where it's supposed to go. And perhaps do a little grinding or you hit it with the, uh, the, uh, the saw if I need to just whack a little piece out of there. But I think we're going to be alright. So let me go ahead and start getting on this, and uh, we'll see where we leave off at. All right, I got out the grinder and the belt sander. Went along this side here. And this is all that Chinese welder stuff that I did last year. So you can see there's some pinholes in here that I need to whack again. Down here's pretty good though. And I went around this and I ground off this whole side here because I was gonna re-weld that anyway. And after looking at it, it actually doesn't look too bad. I probably see about a dozen pinholes. Again, this is the Chinese welder. What I'll do is I'll, I'll put a, a, a drop light up inside of this here and I'll see where all the, the pin holes are where the lights coming through and I'll just bzz, 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 you know fill them up got these holes up here that were rusted through filled got that taken care of but the corner oh yes the corner check that out it's nice and smooth up through here I still need to weld up underneath but I didn't do that just yet because I still had to do a little bit of bending to make sure that the uh, conformity of that curve is good and uh, it's looking pretty good it needs a little bit of tweaking but uh, it's it's almost there it's almost there it doesn't look odd as it would have if I didn't um, put those two extra cuts on the outside. So anyway, that looks good. I also went up and around here and got that all sanded down. 
It's like I gotta get in here a little more with a file. I don't have a tool that's small enough, quite enough, to get into there. And then I need to clean up this corner too. There was some rust through over here, so I cut that out and, and just filled it in with some weld. So it needs a little bit of welding up inside of there. On the outside, went up through here and sanded that out a little bit more. I found another pinhole in there. This again was all that Chinese welding. I went and sanded through here and through here. And that looks pretty good. And uh, that's about where I'm stopping right now. Um, so I can get some video, of course. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up under here and fill these welds in next. And this door actually needs to be, yeah, you can hear it. It's the other reason why I didn't finish welding them in yet is because this actually needs to be closed up a little tighter. Because there's a, um, well, it's not really a seal, a seal it's, a, it's a U channel that goes up inside of here that the window pushes up into. And it needs to be tighter than that. And I think that uh, once I got it welded in, I could probably put a set of vice grips on it and just squeeze it a little bit. But uh, it's got its shape like it's supposed to have, so it's not too bad. Not too bad off. Down here it's pinched a little bit too, so I'll have to widen that up. But it's just a matter of uh, bending and twisting. There's no hammering, no heavy hammering required on any of that stuff. So, that's what we're looking at here. Door opens and closes smoothly. In fact, it was getting a little bit hung up, and I discovered there was actually a little weld up in here, just a little a little stalactite. It wasn't very tall at all, I mean, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, but it was just enough to catch the weld that was on the corner of this that needed to be filed down, and the two of them were just interfering with each other. It was causing the door to get hung up, and now it's not. Okay, this door is looking pretty damn good. Still gotta fix this little spot over here, but before I even get to that, there it is, it wasn't even closed all the way. It takes a little bit of force to close it, but it seems pretty good. The door is actually a little bit recessed, just like it is at stock, and once you put that seal in, that door will come out a little bit. So that's actually normal. Oh, somebody did mention that my doors and my windows aren't even. That the window in the back looks taller than the door, and that's true, actually, and because, and you'll like this, and this is the same on all Beetles, even stock ones, once you put a rubber seal in here, the rubber seal, the edge of it, will actually be even with this window, and this lip that you see here will hide, you won't actually see it, so any of that optical illusion of this side being taller uh, will will not or won't be a problem once the uh, the window with the seal is put in and I've actually tested that on the other side, I don't know if I've ever put that in a video, but I put in just a a temporary piece of plexiglass just to see how well it would fit and using the oval window seal it actually fit in here without having to cut it and that was something I mentioned before too the oval window seal for the back oval is actually the same size as this and that was just an accident didn't even mean for that to happen I just happened to have the oval window seal and I laid it on top of that window and looked at it and said you know what I think that's gonna fit so I stretched around that, that piece of plexiglass that I had and put it in the window on the other side and it actually fit and uh, went in there just like it was meant to be. Okay, so yeah, optical illusion. And it might also be more of an illusion here because there's kind of a high spot here. There is on that side too. And that's where the vent window was. And when I pulled it out, it kind of bent up the door sill a little bit. So I'm gonna have to press that down into place. But before I get into any of that, uh, I'm actually gonna cut out the rusty section anyway. But that causes the door sill to slope back which makes it look even lower in the back than it does in the front which is probably one of the reasons why these windows don't look even there's my even B pillars you notice the thickness of the door and the B pillar is the same on a stock beetle that's not the case this is actually much skinnier than it is on the door and to me it always looked awkward it always looked wrong like it always looked like it was a mistake like when they stamped out the windows from the uh, the rear quarters that the die was just a little too close to the edge and that's just the way they came out, but no, that's just the way they all are. It's the same on early beetles and late beetles, but uh, the fact is that the B pillar is thinner than the door. But because of the way I built it, and because I had this car cut to pieces, that's one of the subtleties on this car that makes it look so much better. And if you look at it closely, you'll notice it actually looks like it's thicker on that side, but that's because of that lip, once again. Once you put that rubber seal in there, it's actually going to cause that to close up a little bit. So it won't look quite so chunky. All right, this door is looking good. I'm gonna hit it a little more welding. I notice uh, I'm starting to lose a little bit of daylight. As a matter of fact, my light came on, which indicates that it's starting to get a little dim. But I'm gonna to try to uh, at least finish up the welding on this corner here. I have a lot of time in these doors, that's for sure. I mean, I could have done the whole roof chop. Looking at this, 
And to be quite honest, if I were to take another Beetle that didn't have rust issues, and that was the big thing, this car was a rebuild. I actually built it up to what you see rather than chopping the top. I actually built it up just from pieces parts. And if I were to take a solid Beetle that didn't have any rust, I could guarantee you I could do the roof chop in probably a day or two. So in a weekend, if I got started in the morning on Saturday, I could have it done by Sunday at dinner time. But those doors, the doors is the tricky part. That's the part that takes a lot of work and you have to get them just right. So uh, that's where we're at right now. And as I said in the other video, it, it really matters which way those doors are shaped because if they don't open and close correctly, um, what good is the car? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get back on that corner see if we can get that corner finished up. And uh, if we still have enough daylight, we'll try to attack that front edge here on the A-pillar. That doesn't line up either. But if not, that'll be in the next video. Now we are expecting that hurricane, as I said, but I don't think we're gonna see any of the effects of that until Tuesday night, Tuesday evening, no sooner than Tuesday afternoon sometime, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm gonna have to look at the latest weather update. That was the one from a few hours ago. Anyways, we're gonna jump back on it. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Okay, I think we've got that corner nailed. And it has just a perfect contour to it now, and you can see that. That was a lot of work to get that right, but I got it right on both sides even. Check that out. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. It is all ground smooth. It needs very, very little filler, just enough to fill in the scratches. And there's actually some dents there. Somebody must have slammed something in the door. But it's actually got some dents. And this is all smoothed out. This is looking good. I got in here with the belt sander a little bit and uh, sanded that out. I also filled in some of the pinholes that were over here that I complained about earlier. Likewise over here, I filled in those pinholes and ran the sander around it. Same with a few pinholes that I found up in there. That's all good to go. Okay, what's left on this? I still have to fix that little bite. That's easy. That probably only take about 20 minutes. There's some pinholes along this seam here that need to be filled, and as I said before, I'll just put a drop light up inside the door, and that way I'll see the light coming through, and I'll just zzz, 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 fill, them, fill them, no problem. Uh, I've got to replace this section in here. That doesn't have to be done for the car show, though. I'm not too worried about that. That will be one of the last things that I do. I'll probably attack that this winter. But I do have to work on this area up here. This part sticks out just a bit much. So what I need to do is cut a pie cut out of this and make it a little smaller and make it fit. Or I have to take a slice out of this and spread it open. Either which way, that's not too bad. I still have this triangular piece over here that's sticking up. You can't really see it. But there's a piece of metal over here where everything is squeezed together and there's two, two slices out of it. I need to close that up once and for all and get that squared away. And on the outside, I need to fix this over here. Once those are set, this door should be complete. I think I'll be good with it after that point. But that contour, you know, that contour set everything because that's the true shape of the car. If I didn't get that contour right, this door never would have looked right at all. Yeah, that, that curve is detrimental to the shape of that door. It's just, if that wasn't right, it just would have looked funny. Yeah, same with this one down here. This is a really tight radius on that, but that one had to be right also. Ah, uh, okay, I think we just about got it. And uh, I was asked earlier, how many bacons did I cut out of the roof? And bacon is our new unit of measurement because, you know, the imperial me measurement is so stupid. We're going to change it to something more American. So we're going to call it the, the bacon system. And we're going to measure everything in bacons. <laughs> Even if it's a, a bucket of water, you know, how many bacons of water go in it? It doesn't make any sense, but it's not supposed to. <laughs> but I cut about, uh, about 23 bacons out of the roof. And uh, I'm sorry, 23 bacons and four bites. Four bites is a smaller unit measurement. There's uh, 47 bites in, in, a, in a bacon. So there's 23 bacons cut out of this plus four bites. So does that make sense to you? Well, that's about what it turns out to. You guys could do the math and figure it out. But the windshield used to be about, uh, I think it's about, I think it was 16 inches tall and currently it's, it's seven. So you can do the math and figure out how many bacons there is to an inch. <laughs> All right, there we go. This door needs to be killed next. You need to do the same thing up in here fix that triangle cut that's in there and uh, I gotta finish doing some of the welding around this stuff there's actually a dent in this too I don't know what the hell was going on that this door is actually dented here somebody must have closed that door on something so I'm gonna have to uh, pull that dent out and clean that up all these welds in here are just spot welds so I'll need to finish the seam on that no problem get it ground down I like the way the passenger door opens and closes better. It's 
ever so slightly different. Just ever so slightly different. I mean, both open and close very well. I just, I like the passenger door's action a little better. And it may have something to do with the handle. The spring in the handle feels better. But I have replacement handles for this car, so that's not going to be an issue with brand new springs in it and everything. All right. So, anyways, thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it. I'm going to continue working on this thing and welding away. we got a hurricane that's supposed to be here as soon as tomorrow night, so I'm going to do as much as I can. I've got a, a couple of videos, a couple of quickie videos, shot to uh, try to keep the channel busy so you guys have an upload every day. Um, that really has been my goal. What in the hell is that? Is that a frog? I think I found a froggy. Oh, look. My neighbor's car here, a little froggy. <laughs> Boing. There he is. Let's touch him until he pees. <laughs> Always people with the stupid music going down the street. I don't even understand the words and all I hear is boom boom. Boom, boom. La, 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 la. Anyways, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Pluck that little dingle belly that you see down there next to the subscribe button. Make sure you check out our group page, the Duckman Cycles VW Group. Head on up there. There'll be a discussion of this project as well as anything else anybody else has. And uh, as always, you know, if you want to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. That's duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Now, don't send just any general question over there. I mean, if you have something personal you'd like to share with me you don't want to put in public. But if it's a project-related question, Please share it up on the group page. That's certainly the place for it. If I don't get to you, somebody else will. There's a lot of people on there that are very active and probably even more skilled than I am at doing some of these things. Maybe a little more easily intimidated, <laughs> but I'm sure they have a lot more skill than I do. <laughs> so thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.